Good day, students. In this group, we're going to be going over uh, two examples and how to use um, integration by parts to, to find the uh, integral of um, indefinite integral of certain expressions. In this example, we're going to be going over a logarithmic expression first and then a, a tree expression. All right, so first of all, let's start by going over refreshing our memory on what the integration by parts formula is. Uh, the integration by parts formula um, is basically the integral of u uh, dv is equals uv minus the integral of v du. Okay, so that's the um, integration by parts formula. All right, so let's see. Uh, where did this formula come from? Well, what we're going to do, I'm going to do a real quick derivation of this formula for you real quick, and then we'll go ahead and, and start making, uh, making use of it. Okay, all right, so... This formula basically came from the product rule. You remember what the product rule is, right? So let's see, um, let's type of the derivation here. Derivation. So the product rule, we're finding the derivative of two functions, right? The product of two functions. So let's see, <clears throat> we have d dx of uv, okay? So using the product rule of uh, an uv, the derivative of u times v is basically u times the derivative of, of v, u times dv dx, uh, plus v times the derivative of u, so v times du dx, okay? All right, now let's start out by multiplying the entire equation by dx, so we, it basically clears out the uh, dx's, okay? So multiply the entire equation by dx, so that yields um, uh, d of uv equals u dv, uh, plus VDU, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to proceed to find the uh, indefinite integral of both sides of this expression. So and the antiderivative of that, uh, indefinite integral of that, and the indefinite integral of this entire expression right here, okay? So um, for this one, um, the antiderivative and the derivative are basically inverse operations. So if you take the Integral of the derivative of an expression, you end up with that expression. These two cancel each other out. So we just have uv on the left side equals, now we're going to do term by term integration. This will be the integral of u dv uh, plus the integral of v du. Okay? Now, what if we subtract um, v du from both sides? If we subtract v du from both sides, let me show you what I'm doing. Subtract the uh, indefinite integral of v du. On both sides, we're going to end up with uh, the expression the integral of u dv equals this difference right here, which is uv minus the integral of v du. Okay, so this is basically what the integration by parts formula is. It's just a, another variation of, of the product rule. That's that's where um, it's from. Okay, all right, so there you have it. Now let's shift our attention to the first example. Okay. All right, uh, example one, we're going to find the following. All right, so for number one, what we're going to find is we want to find the indefinite integral of log base b of x dx. Okay, well, we're going to find this uh, using uh, integration by parts. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and find this. So what we have to do is we need to find the proper u and dv, okay? We need to find u, dv, because that's the left side of the expression, and then we can go ahead and, and find the rest, okay? So let me write the expression, uh, the formula again. Uh, antiderivative of u, dv, equals uv minus the indefinite integral of v, du, all right? So how can we select the appropriate u, all right? So uh, to select the appropriate u, we can, we can use the pipette like, rule, by pet, you already know what that is. Uh, it basically means when you're selecting u, if you have a logarithm, you select that first as u. Uh, if not, you look for an inverse uh, function, inverse treat function, and then power function, exponential, and then a treat function, okay? So here we have logarithms, so that automatically tells us that our u is going to be the logarithmic function, okay? All right, all right, so we have uh, u, uh, is going to be log uh, base b of x, okay? 
All right, so now that we have u, that automatically tells us the other, right? The other piece is going to be dv, so dv uh, is, is basically uh, dx, okay? So we see this function right here, we're splitting it. This first piece is u, and whatever you have left is dv, okay? Because we have u dv here, uh, so this is u and that's dv. Okay, so now after you find u and dv, you have to find v and du, okay? So to find du, just simply differentiate this, du, uh, derivative of log x base b is 1 over x ln b. Uh, and then to find dv, you just, you just basically integrate both sides, okay? You find the antiderivative of that. So uh, and if you integrate both sides, you find out that v is equal to x, okay, just by integration. Okay, so now uh, we can uh, set up an equation that we can evaluate. So we have the antiderivative of log base b of x dx equals uv, so that's u right here, and v, x log base b of x minus the indefinite integral of v, which is x du, which is 1 over x ln b. I'm sorry, I suppose we put a dx here. <laughs> uh, dx. Okay? Alright, so let's see what we can do here. Um, this expression is as simple as it gets, it requires no evaluation. Here we can cancel out the x's, right? So we have um, the antiderivative of. Now, 1 over ln b, uh, b is a constant, so 1 over ln b can be factored out. So we have 1 over ln b. Uh, integral of the x. Okay, so imagine that there's a 1 here. So the antiderivative of 1 is just simply um, x. Okay, so this is going to become x log base b of x minus x over the natural logarithm of b, that properly, uh, and then this whole expression plus c. Okay, so that's basically the antiderivative. Let's just make it look a little bit better, we can factor out something. So the integral of log base b of x dx, we can factor out x, is the same thing as x times log base b of x minus 1 over the natural logarithm of b plus c. And there you have it, okay? Alright, so now let's take a look at another example. This is a pretty unique problem we're going to do next. So this problem requires the use of the u substitution. I'm sorry, it requires the, the use of integration by parts twice and also uh, the use of u substitution. So we're going to use uh, two techniques with one being used twice. Alright, so the problem is we want to evaluate the integral x to the third cosine x squared dx. Okay? Alright, so um, <clears throat> in this problem, uh, first thing we want to do, we can clearly see that um, we can use u substitution here. Uh, so when we're gonna, what we're going to do first is rewrite it in a way where it's obvious that u substitution can be used here. So um, the reason why I can't go directly into integration by parts is because of this x squared here. This x squared basically uh, poses some, some kind of complexity, makes it a little bit difficult. So um, what I'm going to do is how about we uh, split this up. See this x squared, I'm going to break this up. So I'll write this as the integral of um, x times x squared uh, cosine x squared dx. Okay? So if I called x squared u and I differentiated that, then I will have a u outside and x dx would be my du, um, du over 2, basically. Okay? So I'm going to use u substitution here, um, but in this case I'm going to call it uh, k substitution. Okay? Um, so uh, let's say using k substitution. I don't want to use a u because I'm going to be using u later um, when I'm doing integration by parts, okay? So using k substitution, the same thing as u substitution, uh, we're going to say let k be x squared, okay? So if k is x squared, then um, the derivative, the k, uh, is going to be um, 2x dx, okay? 
So we want we want dx to stand we want x dx to stand alone. So we have to get rid of the two. I get rid of that two there. So we divide both sides by two. So I divide by two. Divide by two. So we're gonna have um, uh, dk over two is equal to x dx. Okay. Now we're ready to make use of. Uh, the use substitution. So let me partition my workspace so you all can see what I'm doing as I do it. Uh, so we're going to have, um, anyway, have x squared. So this x squared here, I replace it with k. Okay, the k substitution. So we're going to have the integral of, well, let me rewrite it so it's obvious what I'm doing. I'm going to write x squared cosine x squared. And in this x, I'll move it over to x dx. Okay. So this x dx will get rid of as a package of dk over 2, and then these two x squares will represent replace with uh, k. All right, so we're going to have the integral of k cosine k dk over 2. Okay, this is after making the substitution. So we can factor out these two. So we have 1 half times the integral of k cosine uh, k uh, dk. Okay. All right, so how are we going to evaluate this? Um, to evaluate this, we're going to use um, uh, integration by parts, okay? So to do this problem, so let me put the problem here, one half times the indefinite integral of k cosine k dk. Okay, so remember um, the procedure for selecting uh, the appropriate u, okay? Uh, remember, you use the Lipet rule, like that. The last of the last thing to select as u is a trig function. Okay, we have a power function here, k to the first power, or uh, so that one will be our u. Okay, so u is going to be k. That means the other piece would be d uh, dv. Okay, so dv is going to be um, cosine k, cosine k dk. Now, um, we remember what the rules are for integration by parts, right? It's u v minus integral of v du. So we need um, v and du. So to find du, differentiate both sides here. du is simply going to be dk. And then v, you find the antiderivative of cosine, um, which is basically uh, sine, all right? Because when you differentiate sine, you get cosine. So antiderivative of cosine is sine, sine k, okay? All right, now let's go ahead and uh, write the formula first before we use it. The formula is the integral of u dv, which is what we have here, equals uv minus the indefinite integral of v du. All right, so let's rewrite the problem. Uh, we have 1 half times the integral of k cosine k dk. So that's going to be uv, which is k sine k. Well, let's not forget the 1 half. Um, one half of uh, times k uh, sine k, which is u v, minus the integral of v, which is uh, sine k, uh, du, which is dk. Okay? All right, so this is where you get to use your integration by parts. So let's go ahead and simplify this. So we're going to have, let's keep the one half out here, one half times k sine k. Minus, now what's the uh, integral of sine x? Remember when you differentiate um, cosine, you get negative sine, right? So the integral of sine is going to be um, negative uh, cosine k, okay? Negative cosine k plus c. All right, and you can check the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so these minus and the other minus cancels out, so this is good. All right, let's simplify this further. So we're going to have 1 half. Uh, times um, k sine k, or we can leave that outside, plus cosine k plus c. Okay, all right, so we remember our original problem was in terms of x, and we had uh, we said that let uh, k be equal to x squared, so let's put that back. So replace. Uh, k with its original value, which is uh, x squared, okay? So the integral is going to be 1 half times uh, k 
k is going to be x squared sine the argument k will also be x squared k sine x k sine x would be x squared plus sine x squared plus cosine x will become cosine x squared plus c and there goes your final answer for the uh, integral of x to the third cosine x squared dx okay so uh, there you have it So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. And please post a comment to let me know what you think about this uh, presentation. More clips can be found on math.serve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.